Hello everyone, my name is Doug Hills and this is the Manga Studio Guide. On this episode, I'm revisiting how to create and work with the frame tool in Manga Studio. This is because when I first talked about frames in my Smith Micro tutorial series, it was done using version 5.0 of the program. Since then, there have been a few changes in how you can work with frames, so I'm going to revisit how they work in the program so that we're all now on the same page. For those unfamiliar with the frame tool and its various subtools, there are means for us to dynamically create comic panels on our page. And when I say dynamic, I mean just that. We can not only create our frames, but we can also resize, reshape, cut, change the border width, change the border style. Practically anything we'd want to do with our panels, we can do that. And we can do it without any loss of quality. To find the frame tools, we need to head over to the tools palette. The thing is, the frame tool shares real estate with several other tools, so you might not see it right away. So my suggestion, if you can't find it, is to click on the icon right above the text tool or word balloon tool right about here on the tools palette, or press U on your keyboard. It'll get you to the same place. Heading up to the subtools palette, click on the button marked frame. And now below, there are three tools that we can use to make our frames. The rectangular frame is pretty simple. It creates a rectangular frame. The polyline frame creates a frame in any shape that we want by placing points on the canvas until our shape is completed. And finally, the frame border pen lets us draw a frame freehand. So this gives us even more freedom to create a frame in any crazy shape or style that we want. And once the frame is drawn using our default settings, a frame folder is created along with a drawing layer and a white background layer. The frame folder itself contains the border, which you see here, and a masking layer, which you see in light purple. Now I'm going to do a quick little sketch here because I want to demonstrate a thing about how the mask works. If I draw anywhere in this white area, this, this is the active area, if I drew outside of it, the lines just seemingly stop, although they're actually still there. Coming over to the layers palette, I'm going to select the frame folder and you'll notice that the mask went now to a darker purple. I click on this button and it gives me the ability to choose whether or not to turn on or off the mask or show the mask area. I'm going to turn off the mask and now you'll see that all the lines that I just kind of scribbled are still there. And I can reposition the frame however I want, and it, it'll just adjust the mask and the live area accordingly. If we want to change the default settings, let's head over to the Tool Properties palette. Here, we can set whether or not we want a border drawn, or if we just want the mask area. We can select whether we want each frame drawn to create its own frame folder, or to be added to an existing frame folder. We can select whether or not we want a raster drawing layer and or a white background layer. If we're using the rectangular frame tool, we can set the aspect ratio. By clicking here, we can set either a width to height ratio, either by percentage or by specific pixel length. If we're using the polyline frame tool, we can select whether we want to create a polyline frame using straight lines or a curved one using the spline, quadratic bezier, or cubic bezier method. We can set the brush size or border width. We can adjust the strength of the anti-aliasing or edge smoothing. And we can adjust the brush shape or the type of border we can apply. Clicking the drop down list gives us the option of using like a pen border, a pencil border, a spray border, watercolor, heart, star, whatever you would like. And if we're using the frame pen, we can set whether we want any corners drawn to be pointed or curved and how much post correction or jitter reduction we want to apply after your frame is drawn. Now let's say we want to adjust this existing frame. Let's say it's too small or we didn't set the border width properly. Heading back to the tools palette, we'll click on the object select tool here. Now when we come back to the canvas, we can now adjust the size, shape, and rotation of the frame using any of these control points to resize and to rotate. Or we can click and drag any of the sides or even corners if we want to skew the rectangle or other shape however we want. We can quickly move a frame to the edge of the canvas by clicking any of the yellow triangles you see next to the frame. And if I draw another rectangle here quick on the same folder, we can adjust these frames either individually by clicking and selecting each frame, or if we select the mask area, we can adjust the frames as a whole. And finally, if we no longer wanted a frame, we can select it with the Object Select tool and press the Delete key. Now, the Tool Properties palette provides some additional options to change how the borders look and behave. Snap to another frame border lets us instantly snap a border of one frame to the border of another frame by clicking the yellow triangle, or if you're dragging it, it'll instantly snap to a nearby border. Work with another frame border lets us move a nearby frame border in tandem with the border we're clicking and dragging along on the canvas. 
We can turn the borders on and off. We can change the main color of the border by clicking the, the color button here and then selecting a new color if we wanted to choose purple, for example. If we wanted to draw our own border, we could turn the frame border off and using the snap function, we can draw along the ruler that is in also included in the frame folder. And you can use any drawing later inside, or if I create a new one, outside of the frame folder. You may need to turn on the rulers. To do that, come over to the layers palette and click on the rulers button here. You'll see it become active now. And now if I come up to the drawing layer here, you'll see this the purple ruler lines. Grab a pen. And now I can draw along the frame borders. You can change the brush size or border width, either as a group or on an individual frame basis. And we can adjust the brush shape again. So if you want, if you had it set to pen, but you want to switch it to bumpy, you can do that very easily. Now the next tool I want to cover are the divide frame tools. These are tools that can divide a frame into as many smaller frames as needed in whatever shape we want them in. Now to show how this works, I'll demonstrate with this set of pencil roughs I have here. Now I created a single frame surrounding all of the panels. There's no white background layer so I can see my artwork and know where I can make my cuts. Now the divide frame tools are located over here in the subtools folder below the three frame draw tools. And they are essentially the same tool with one distinct difference. Divide frame folder will take each cut frame and place it into its own frame folder, while divide frame border will divide the frames up but keep all of the frames within the same frame folder. Beyond that, the two tools work the same way. I'll select divide frame border and all I do is click and drag along the canvas until I know where I want to make my cut. You'll notice that there's a ghost line that appears and this is my guide to show where the cut will happen. And I can draw it at any angle that I want, but if I want to keep it purely horizontal or purely vertical, I would hold down the shift key on my keyboard, and this will lock the divider into 45 degree increments. When I'm happy with where it is, I just release and the frame has been cut. And we can make as many frame cuts as we want. I'll do a few more. And of course if I went too far, let's say I cut there, simply press the undo key, you get to go back a step or two. Coming over to the tool properties palette, we get a couple of additional options for how the frames can be cut. We can change the type of cut from linear or divide by straight line to a polyline or a spline curved cut. We can adjust the gap or spacing between the frames as they are cut. If we chose like a linear cut, we would be able to adjust the horizontal and vertical gap. If we selected a polyline or a spline, we would just get a simple gap adjustment. Or we can check the space of frame border checkbox and just use the gap settings defined in Manga Studio's preferences. Oh, and for those of you who would like your frames cut more evenly, select the frame you'd like to divide with the object select tool and then select layer, ruler frame, divide frame border equally from the main menu. From here, you can check whether you want an even horizontal and or vertical cut, set the number of divisions on each axis from two to 10, select whether or not you want the cuts made relative to the canvas or to the shape or angle of the frame border, and whether you'd like these new frames to be in their own frame folder with layers duplicate to the original frame folder, a blank frame folder, or just keep everything within it, the original frame folder. When you're happy with the settings, press okay, and as you can see, the frame that we selected has now been cut evenly along, in this case, the vertical and horizontal axes. Now, before I go, I'm going to come over here and open the materials drawer. And I'm going to click Manga Material Framing Templates. And what you see here are a series of preset frame templates that you can use on any comic page simply by clicking and dragging or by pressing the paste button. Now, if a print guide is set up like I have here, the template will fit within the basic frame or safe area. If there was no print guide, the template would just fill up the entire canvas. Now, there are a nice variety of templates available in materials, so you may find a template that fits the page you're working on, or you could even riff off of one of these templates by placing it on the page, grabbing the divide frame folder tool, and cutting things up a little further. Now, if you wanted to use one of our own frame sets as a template, the first thing to do is head over to the layers palette and select any of the frame folders, or in this case, you would select the parent folder, I'll double click and just call it test. Then I come up to the main menu and I select edit, register image as material. And this brings up the material property dialog box. I would navigate to where I want to save this. And this can be any place on the, in the materials folder, but I'm going to put it under manga material framing template. You can change the material name if you want to. I'm going to leave it as test and I press okay. If I navigate back over here and go all the way down, our test template is there and ready to go. I'll remove the, the old one, select and paste. And there we go. The template can now be used as many times as we want whenever we need it. And that covers all the basics of working with the frame tool in the latest version of Manga Studio. 
If you're a longtime user, you can see all the additional options and features that allow us to create and adjust our frames in practically any way that we want. If you're a new user, you now have a video on the subject that now matches the user interface that you are using. And with that, I'll wrap up this episode, which was brought to you by Patreon subscribers like the ones you see here. Thanks, everybody. If you like the Manga Studio Guide and would like to help me keep these videos free for everybody forever, you can subscribe for as little as a penny per video through Patreon, or you can purchase books, page templates, rulers, or just throw a few bucks in the tip jar on my Shopify store. Thank you all for your support and for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.